Good afternoon, and thanks for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Some of you may remember a time when the Extension County agent served as a jack of all trades, someone who could run a 4-H meeting and explain what to do for your crops or cows. Times change, but Extension's commitment to serve Vermonters remains the same. Business support is now crucial to the economics of our working landscape. And work is what Across the Fences Keith Silva found when he met up with a couple of teams of loggers in central Vermont. Brad Johnson and Derek O'Toole are what you would call workhorses. Durable, dependable, and hardworking. Bob and Ted would agree. And they should know. We work with them. They don't work for us. Johnson and O'Toole own and operate Third Branch Horse Logging. To watch them work the woods using animal power invokes a way of lifelong past. But make no mistake, these men and these horses aren't here for sentimental reasons. They're here to work. And that's the assumption, right, in the, in the public at large, and we're always fighting those assumptions like, oh, you're a horse logger, well, it's something you do on the side or for fun, or you have some other business, or it's not, it can't possibly be a full-time job. You can't really be running a small business as power with horses. We hear that all the time. And the reality is we're making the same kinds of analysis and decisions that every other small business owner is making. People often make the kind of jump that we are anti-heavy machinery, anti-skitters, anti-harvesters, feller bunchers, and that's just not true. We just have a different model. Um, and yeah, the horses may have been brought from the old world, but we feel that they are still a relevant tool as far as we can see. Horses were used for centuries as the primary draft animal on the farm and in the forest. Back. Because well, they work. We're trying to use the horses on as much acreage as we can because they are the, the most nimble extraction tool. Nothing has come on the market yet than weigh, that weighs this much, even though he is about a ton, and can move as much weight and go through a three-foot gap. Oh, the horses primarily work on the stump, so the tree is felled. Easy, G. Once it's laid down, it's limbed and cut to length. We move that wood out to a place where the tractor can pick it up. And then the tractor makes that longer distance, that forward from the place where the horses leave it out to the landing and then the tractor is able to stack it. But we need both tools to be commercially viable. Third branch horse logging provides landowners with a less is more approach to forestry that prioritizes long-term goals over quick profits. We're certainly not a quantitative extraction tool. We pull out a lot less. The trees that are left behind, we're trying to do everything we can to give them the best shot to become the next generation of high quality, healthy trees. We want to minimize our impact in every possible way while still providing a, a, a good financial option and a good long-term ecological option for, for landowners. Um, and that's a little bit of a different approach. When I ask them to prioritize their top five goals for this cut, timber sale is probably not going to be number one. It might be number three, but they might have things like carbon sequestration. They might have things like cross-country ski trails for them and their kids and their grandkids. They might have things like um, bird habitat. But in every case, almost all of them have a, a very long-term perspective via beyond timber sale. Third Branch Horse Logging offers a unique approach to forestry, but it's no different from any other ag-based business. In order to work, it has to be profitable. We still have to plug into a commodity market at the end of the day. And all of our expenses leading up to that truck, taking those logs to the mill, has to work. End of story, right? In an ideal world, if we could do everything with just the horses and we could make a living doing that, I'd much prefer to do that. I'd rather be on the lines or on the cart than I would be on a tractor seat. But given the economic market in New England, the way logs and, and wood is bought and sold, we can't make a living doing that. Yeah, well, with getting your website Service. going and now you've started to keep to get their a, business um, on track you know, an and in the black, and Johnson and O'Toole work with Chris Lindgren, a forest business educator with University of Vermont Extension. It's a different dynamic, um, for sure, when you add horses into the mix. You know, I work primarily with uh, forest products businesses now, but in, you know, historically I've worked on uh, farms and so figuring in those costs of you know, essentially 24-hour work, which is when you're farming. So they're doing forestry work, but uh, they're also farming because they have animals that they take care of. There are about 2,000 people working in forest products businesses, according to the Vermont Sustainable Jobs Fund. Through workshops and one-on-one -on -one consultation, 
Lindgren works with around 60 clients. A lot of what I do is work on building people's confidence, both on the sort of analysis, record keeping, um, business, you know, numbers part of it. You know, once people see the work that these guys do, um, if they're the right fit, you know, the right person who's looking for that kind of job, it kind of sells itself. Chris has been great for us. We frankly needed help in terms of um, figuring out uh, a number of different things. Um, the biggest one being how is our model um, viable in the, in the conventional marketplace? Can you use horses in a way that allows you to make a, a decent living? So Chris has been super helpful for us in getting our, our fixed costs, our variable costs down. And I think a lot of folks who use horses and probably other loggers as well are really, for the most part, guessing at those numbers, right? And for us, because our profit margins are incredibly small, we really have to know what those numbers are. The financial viability and sustainability of third branch horse logging is yoked to the pride these men have for their work and the horses they work with. You have to love it, but there's also results on the ground from the work that we're doing that are tangible, that you can see. So coupled with the work that we do and the product that we deliver and liking the animals and using them for that application, it's, it's something that I like to get up and do. I love horses. I connect with them. I, I get something out of my work that I can't get using any other tool. See, there's something about working with live power that really appeals to me. And frankly, it's, I think I'm skilled with it and, and the, the tool suits me. Um, and I think I'm able to get something from horses that, that's, that's pretty magical um, when, when you're out there working. Third branch horse logging takes a fresh approach to forestry management. And if it looks a little old fashioned, that's okay, because it still works. In Randolph, I'm Keith Silva with Across the Fence. Beautiful animals, thank you, Keith. If you're curious about how Third Branch Horse Logging got its name, Third Branch is the section of the White River that connects Brad and Derek's home farms. Joining me now is Mark Canella. Mark is the leader of the UVM Extension's Farm Business Program. Thank you so much for coming in. Yeah, thanks for telling, having me. Telling us a little bit more about this. So clearly you work with loggers. What other kind of forestry products does your program work with and, and help with business? Yeah, we help a number of different types of businesses. Our goal really is to help people, I think, it was said very well there, help with the decision making. So it's mm. sort of whatever type of business you've got. We've got some sawmills, we've got some timber framers, even some specialty product manufacturers and firewood cutters. Um, but we've got educators working with all of them to help them, like, I, like they said, answer some of those difficult questions or um, build some confidence making the decisions that they know they need to make for right. their business. To keep it viable. So yeah. sticking with the woods for another moment, um, what about um, farm businesses that, that involve maple and sugar, sugar makers? Yeah, we're also working with a lot of sugar makers and sap only producers in the woods. It's, it's not just about processing sap all the way to syrup. There mm -hmm. are some people with very viable models to just extract the sap and transfer it to a neighbor down the road who maybe is already invested in their sugar house. Uh -huh. um, so we've been doing a cost of, uh, cost of production analysis program for the past five years, working with a number of producers to help them get their numbers right and really understand how do they maintain profitability with changes in the markets or changes with the costs that they face with right. their enterprises. Right, how many, how many taps does it take? And yeah. you've also been collaborating with the Proctor Maple Research um, Group Center. Yeah. Yeah, so in addition to my wheelhouse, which would be financial analysis, we're realizing that Vermont's really leading the country in technology and best practices, and we've got a great opportunity with partnering with Proctor to bring business education to the sort of the national dialogue with maple producers. So we're advancing new projects on maple leasing um, so that landowners can collaborate better with sugar makers that don't own their woods, um, moving into different legal resources and things that can be of support to really the whole nation. Um, so we're, out, we're really launching a national website and national education program in collaboration with those Proctor specialists. Fabulous. And, and so th the goal of your business program, quickly, you almost said it before, but just yeah, you know, we're really there to help, to listen, to help people make decisions. Um, we don't make decisions for business managers. Um, let's be honest, not everyone wants to talk about their business with an outsider, um, but there's a lot of people that do. Right. Independent business owners that need someone to help them test an idea or deal with a situation that they can't talk to their family members about. So we're there to listen, we ask a lot of hard questions, and then we try to facilitate having that business owner make the best decision for them moving forward to meet their goals. So uh, you, the farm viability project has been really going on for a long time. And the, so the services that you provide, business planning, 
other, yeah. other things. Yeah, business planning, strategic planning for sure, but we do financial analysis. We help with marketing plans. Um, right now we're working with a lot of dairy farmers on compliance issues related to water quality. Um, in those situations, there's a, some heavy duty investments that need to be made. There's a numbers game to be figured out, but there's also some family decision making on where is this business now? Where is it going? Where will it be in 10 years? And, and we want to make these new investments. So you also help with regulation that's, that's out there. How will that impact my, my business? For sure, yeah. Th there, w right now with water quality, it's, it's pretty clear that the improvement of water quality is a clear priority across the state. And business owners are on board with that. The question is, how do they stay on board with their business viability and make new investments or make changes that they, they want to make to improve the, the outcomes of their farm? Well, to make sure that people know how to get in touch with you, because they probably perked up their ears on some things, and find out about workshops, um, how, do they, how do they find out about you? Yeah, sure. We've got a statewide program with educators all over. The best thing is to contact me at our Berlin office. Um, I can give you the phone number. It's 802-476-2003. Uh, and you can also look at our Farm Viability or, mm. or Agricultural Business website, and I can give you that address. It's okay. blog.uvm dot edu slash farm via. Okay, terrific. And just uh, 30 seconds left, you, you deal with dairy a lot and clearly forestry. How about yeah. vegetable farms? Yeah, sure. W our farm viability project will work with all sorts of producers at all scales, um, but we do have a Northeast Vegetable Benchmark project that's a new one, and that's a really unique huh. project, again, to do the cost of, anal or cost of production analysis with the producers, help them understand their numbers, and then do the business coaching to help them understand where in the marketplace they want to be given their costs and given the opportunities. Okay, well, Mark Canella, thank you so much for coming in and talking about the farm business program. You're welcome. And helping so many people. And thank you for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard.